Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. Uh, this is episode two on my series, How to Refinish a Foam Warbird. We're building an FMS P51. It's a 450 millimeter size airframe. And last time uh, we did the basic assembly, I did a review of that, uh, and then we stripped the paint off of the, the airframe. If you want to see that, you can click here uh, for episode one. So what we're going to be doing in this video is filling in all of the panel lines uh, you know that panel lines are way oversized on the airframe uh, and so we're going to fill all of those in smooth it all out get rid of that foam texture before we apply uh, some polycrylic over the entire thing and that's gonna seal it all up and give us a paintable surface so you can see here we've got our stabilizer all of the paint has been stripped off of it uh, and I've actually started filling in uh, the the panel lines and the foam texture and so that's what we're going to go over. In terms of the materials get yourself a nice quality lightweight spackle. I'm using the, the Hobbyco Hobby Light uh, balsa filler. Uh, it's really good stuff. It dries really nicely sands easily and it's actually intended as a balsa filler but it works perfect for that application on the foam. I tried this, this is patch and paint with primer in it in, uh, from Home Depot. It's garbage. Don't waste your time. Uh, get yourself a good quality spackle. I, I really wanted it to work, but it just didn't. The, the material never got hard uh, and it never, uh, it was just really hard to sand. It just kind of crumbled. It didn't actually create dust. It just crumbled away as I tried to sand it. So uh, don't waste your time with that. You can get the Hobby Light stuff from uh, online from Hobby People or most of the big box stores, uh, but you can also uh, get it from your local hobby store if you have one near to you. So, anyways, why don't we get started? I'll show you how uh, we're gonna fill this all in, and then uh, we'll we'll check back and I'll show you what we're gonna do to sand it uh, and then finish it off. We have our staff here. Uh, this is the side we're gonna fill in at this moment. In terms of our uh, spackle, I've added a little bit of water in here so we just get a nice smooth texture uh, to it. And it'll just help it to smooth out a little bit easier. But also, we're going to apply it with this uh, artist spatula. Uh, I use it, these all the time for uh, filler putties and all that stuff too. Uh, so it's a really handy tool to have in your shop. So it's really just a, a matter of we're just going to slather this on over the entire stab really thinly though we don't want to go too um, too heavy with it because we're gonna have to sand this off uh, the other thing is you know when we sand this we don't want to be sanding real heavily uh, because we don't want to sand into the foam being EPO foam it doesn't sand very well and so we don't want to we don't want to deal with that because it ends up getting stringy and so you can have some problems there so this really, this is it. This is all we're going to do, and we're going to do this over the entire airframe. And that's it. So we're going to keep going around this, the entire airframe, uh, and when this is ready to sand, and we've got the whole thing spackled, uh, then we'll, we'll touch base. So note as we sand this, or as we start sanding this, uh, I've got a couple of things. I'm going to use some 180 grit sandpaper. I don't want to use anything more than that, uh, or anything heavier than that, because we don't want to start cutting through into the, the meat of the foam. Uh, so then the other thing is I have a small sanding block. You know, you can use something bigger than this, but I like the small sander because, uh, or the sanding block, because, you know, as we're going to come in here with the sandpaper, we want to sand in kind of a circular motion as we go and uh, what's going to happen is you're going to get kind of peaks and valleys uh, based on the differences between the foam surface and the, the filler. Uh, so what this small sanding block does is it just helps even that stuff out and so it's small enough I can just with my hands kind of go through there and sand it pretty easily. Uh, so you can use something bigger 
but in this case, I think I find localizing it with a small block works the best. Uh, and then this was just made from three layers of eighth inch uh, basswood. So I made this a number of years ago and I've been using it uh, fairly regularly. So as mentioned, we want to, we're gonna come in here, kind of a circular motion as we sand. Uh, and then to even it all out, we're gonna come in with the sanding block to smooth it all out and then you'll end up with something that looks kind of like this. we have our P51 all of the panel lines have been filled in it's kind of an iterative process uh, you know you fill in and then you sand away and you might notice some imperfections so you add a little bit more two or three passes should be more than enough to, to get all of those imperfections we're gonna be using this Minwax polycrylic uh, with a, a foam brush we're gonna be coating the entire airframe with this Minwax uh, the polycrylic and that's going to seal it all in and give us a paintable surface. We're shooting for about six or so coats uh, to get us a nice uh, smooth out surface. And then once we've done that, we'll hit it with some primer and get it ready for our paint. You'll notice uh, here in the background, I've added this radiator exhaust vent on the back of the radiator scoop. That's a scale feature. On the airplane, as it comes out of the box, you have two cooling holes back there. I used some Depron to close the holes and then used our filler to fill it all in and uh, contour it appropriately. Line the two sides with 164th ply and then on the inside there uh, filled in the, the exhaust liner with 164th inch ply also. And so that gives us a much more scale uh, exhaust vent uh, you know, for all the cooling flow that they have going through the fuselage. That's a real simple mod you can do, and I, I've got that on my blog with pictures, thercgeek.com, uh, so you can check those out. And so from here, we're going to apply our polycrylic, and that's going to probably take us a few hours to do so, uh, but then from there, uh, we can start preparing it for paint. So in terms of applying the uh, polycrylic, one thing to note before we start is we don't want to actually shake the can because uh, that's going to induce a bunch of air into, into the mix. We just want to stir it and it doesn't require a whole lot of stirring truthfully. We have our wing here. We've got our wing and we're just simply going to apply it with the foam brush. And you can see that you know it applies onto the surface. Uh, decently and we're just going to do this over the entire airframe and uh, you know if we get over the plastic that's totally fine we want that because uh, we want to get all those areas that we we uh, smoothed out with our filler we want to seal them all up one uniform finish is what we're going for we want it to look like as much like sheet metal as we can uh, given this process <laughs> Here we are, that concludes our second episode in this series, How to Refinish a Foam Warbird. Uh, to this point, 
we have filled in all of the panel lines and we have completely varnished over uh, the airframe. And so next time we're going to uh, start primering, getting the, the surface ready for paint and then we're gonna paint the airframe. Uh, so some takeaways from what we've done here. Uh, the tail, I've glued that on and that allowed me to fill in all of the seams and clean all of that up. The other thing is when I cut into uh, the fuselage, the radiator exhaust vent, uh, I went in and I fixed our issue with the backlash on the control surfaces. Just used some 5 minute epoxy with micro balloons and a 1 8 inch light ply on each side so that way those push rods can't go anywhere and we should have a nice strong linkage. Uh, the other thing is, and I don't know if I'm going to regret this or not, but I ended up pulling all of the covering over the servo wires and I just filled all of that in. I figure if I need to replace a servo or retract or anything like that at that point, I can either dig that out and fix it uh, or using the existing wires I'll just splice in whatever I need to. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I've got, I'll have episode 3 up here soon. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to get that. I'm starting a tutorial on how to build an RC jet, so you can check that out uh, on my YouTube channel as well. And I've got, again, a full article on what we've done here on my blog, uh, thercgeek.com. So be sure to check those out. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.